Babylon, Babylon, Babylon. My goodness, it's so great. I would like to give it to Justin Hurwitz for Babylon, who should win. Hey everyone, welcome back to Canon Cinema. I'm Amanda, otherwise known as AMX ND Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Today, I will be giving you guys my final predictions for the 95th Academy Awards, which are tomorrow and Oscar Sunday is film twitter's super bowl and it is just so much fun i have some drinks prepared i have some food prepped for the oscars just to match the nominees this year so without further ado let's get into this now you guys may not like my picks but i'm always fair and i always do you know who should win who will win i keep my own preferences just out of the way all the time so i end up technically doing three different ballots just for fun <laughs> that's the way i've always been i usually go use uh the next best picture website it's a good friend of mine uh matt neglia who covers award season the entire year and it's really awesome of him and uh you know the community of writers that he has brought onto his website so go check him out on twitter next best picture um and this is the website that i will be using so let's just get into it best live action shorts i'm gonna do these really quick um i do think an irish goodbye is going to take it it will win i watched devalue and i interviewed the filmmakers it's a really powerful film i think that one should win but i think an irish goodbye is going to win so that's that Best documentary short next, we have The Elephant Whisperers, Haul Out, How Do You Measure a Year, The Martha Mitchell Effect, and Stranger at the Gate. I do think that How Do You Measure a Year will win, and I do think it should win. So that I'm locking in for sure. Next, we have uh, Best Animated Short, The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse. These titles are long, my god. Uh, the Flying Sailor, Ice Merchants, My Year of Dicks, and An Ostrich Told Me the World is Fake and I Think I Believe It. I would... I too would believe an ostrich. Yes. Yes. Um, out of all of these, I think my year of dick should win, but however, I think the flying sailor will win or vice versa. I don't know. Those two are like standouts for me out of all of them. So I'm going to give it to my year of dicks. Yeah. I'm doing that. Next, we have Best Original Song. We have Applause from Tell It Like a Woman, Hold My Hand from Top Gun Maverick, Lift Me Up from Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Natu Natu from RRR, and This Is a Life from Everything Everywhere All at Once. I still think Natu Natu is going to take it from RRR. It's the best thing I've seen all year. It's just so good. The whole song, when the song comes into the movie, I think it's really powerful and I'm really happy that they are um, performing it at the Oscars on, on the Oscar stage. I think that's going to be really special. But I do think that Natu Natu is going to steal this, going to take it, should win, will win, 100%. It's going to RRR. Next, we have Best Original Score. Oh, this is stressful. Um, All Quiet on the Western Front had a really good score. I liked it. I can see why it was nominated. Babylon, Babylon, Babylon. My goodness, it's so great. I would like to give it to Justin Hurwitz for Babylon, who should win. From what's been happening with everything, everywhere, all at once with these precursors, I don't, it could come out of nowhere in my eyes that it's nowhere. Um, for everything, everywhere, all at once. But I do think that it's going to go to everything, everywhere, all at once. So I'm going to predict... Ugh, it's going to be terrible to come back to this after. Um, I'm going to predict everything, everywhere, all at once winning score. But you guys know that technically, in my head, it's Babylon. That should win. Next, I have Best Visual Effects. It's All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, The Batman, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, and Top Gun Maverick. If it's not Avatar The Way of Water, what are we doing here? So I, I think that Avatar is taking it. Nothing else compares to Avatar in the visual effects department in 2022. So that's a lock. Should win, will win, hands down. Next, we have Best Sound. Best Sound's very hard. 
And I miss when it was separated into two categories of mixing and editing. I think both of those jobs are completely different and shouldn't be under one umbrella whatsoever, but that's besides the point. We have All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, The Batman, Elvis, and Top Gun Maverick. This is very hard, and usually, usually, it kind of goes to the war film. Out of majority of nominations that I've seen, between mixing and editing, it kind of went hand in hand that you knew that the war film most likely would take it. I have a strong feeling that All Quiet on the Western Front is going to take this. So that's my prediction right now. The film that should win is Top Gun Maverick. That's hard. That sound is very hard for me. Um, I would like to give it to Top Gun Maverick. I really would. If it wins anything, it's probably going to be this. So I'm going to flip a Rooney, and I'm going to do Top Gun Maverick final prediction will win. And Top Gun Maverick should win. Just keep in mind that All Quiet on the Western Front is around, and it's a possibility that it will take it over top gun maverick that's one of them but yeah i'm going with top gun maverick for sound as like final should win will win next we have best production design which is also really tough for me um we have all quiet on the western front avatar the way of water mm, i don't know why i think pinocchio should have been there guillermo del toro's pinocchio should have been in production design but it's okay um babylon elvis and the fablemans is between Babylon and Elvis for me. I think the production and design in both films were absolutely stunning and really complemented the film that they were trying to make through authenticity. I'm not saying The Fablemans wasn't, but it's kind of like a generic like 60s type of vibe, and that's fine. But Elvis and Babylon, they recreated some amazing things in both of those films. So should win, probably Babylon, and the film that will probably win is going to be Elvis. So Elvis my, is my final prediction for best production design. Next we have best makeup and hairstyling, All Quiet on the Western Front, The Batman, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, and The Whale. This is hard because... I watched All Quiet on the Western Front. The makeup when they had either like explosions or it was like really graphic violence. What they did to like their faces, unreal makeup work. The Batman had really strong makeup work, especially for Penguin. Black Panther Wakanda Forever was good. Not the best that I've seen out of like both. The first Black Panther and this one, I think the first one was a bit stronger. Um, Elvis, again, they had to age him. I think that the Elvis makeup and hairstyling was strong as well. And the whale is just on another level. So if I had to pick, the film that should win is probably the whale. The film that will win will be Elvis. I think. I think Elvis has the edge here. If the Academy loved Elvis as much as like they say that they do, because it's very obvious with the amount of nominations uh, versus the nominations for The Whale, I think that Elvis can pull up front a little bit with this one. So that's what I'm locking in with. Next, we have best film editing. We have The Banshees of Inishirin, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Tar, and Top Gun Maverick. So... The only thing winning here and the only thing that should be winning here is everything everywhere all at once. That just beast mode because you're going across a multiversal storyline, many different locations, and you have to make it make sense and piece everything together. And I think that the editing and everything everywhere all at once is probably the most impressive thing that I've seen in a very long time. Uh, so it's definitely should win will win it's definitely going to everything everywhere all at once for what they did with this picture like it's just so good next we have best costume design babylon black panther wakanda forever elvis everything everywhere all at once and mrs harris goes to paris and i know that the people are saying like but elvis is just like recreated looks that he's had that's fine and then they switch over to everything everywhere all at once winning for costumes they're a bit more inventive and they're very wild and different and they had it looks like they had fun with the costuming in there as well then you have ruth carter for black panther wakanda forever who made some beautiful beautiful changes from the first film and i like that babylon was just all over the place very extravagant i don't know i think Everything Everywhere All at Once will win for Best Costume Design, but I think that Black Panther Wakanda Forever should win. 
Elvis is still circling. You don't know how many they're going to take home, but I do think that Ruth Carter uh, has another chance at this one for sure. So I think it's in between the two of them. Next, we have Best Cinematography. We have All Quiet on the Western Front, Bardo, Elvis, Empire of Light, and Tar. There's a one clear standout here, and that's Elvis. Elvis just felt so different with the cinematography. I thought it was just beautifully shot. Uh, and it was a lot of fun to kind of have someone understand the direction of Baz Luhrmann and his vision and kind of work so amazingly together. I do think that Elvis is a will win, should win. Uh, and I hope, I hope, I really do hope that uh, it takes it home. Because then it would be the first woman. So I, I think that would be really awesome. Next, we have Best International Feature, All Quiet on the Western Front, Argentina 1985, Close, EO, and The Quiet Girl. For All Quiet on the Western Front to also be nominated for Best Picture, it's impossible that's not going to win Best International Feature. Absolutely impossible. Um, because if you're not technically giving it for Best Picture, then it deserves to win Best International Feature. But Argentina 1985 is there too, and that has also won the other awards. So I would put All Quiet on the Western Front as a should win, and then Argentina 1985 as the winner. That's my predicted winner for International Feature. It's just really interesting to see how they're going to split that vote between Picture and International Feature. So we'll see what happens there. Next, we have Best Documentary Feature. We have All That Breathes, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, Fire of Love, A House Made of Splinters, and Navalani. I absolutely adore fire of love i think it's one of the best documentaries that i've seen uh that was such a treat at sundance last year and to see it nominated for an oscar is fantastic i do think that that's going to be the should win for me it should win fire of love but i think all the beauty and the bloodshed is going to take it and that's my final predicted winner there next we have best animated feature we have guillermo de toros pinocchio we have Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, The Sea Beast, and Turning Red. All of these pictures are phenomenal. Truly some of the best animated films of 2022. Just absolutely fantastic. It was a beautiful year for animation. But this is definitely going to Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. So next we have best adapted screenplay now we're getting into the bigger categories i hate saying that but it's true the bigger ones and if you guys have been liking my predictions so far let me know in the comments below i want to know how you guys are feeling for the oscar sunday who do you think is going to take home the most awards let me know in the comments below please and thank you and if you guys want to help the channel and help me grow this beautiful community there are some links in the bio to help me out there so for Best Adapted Screenplay, we have All Quiet on the Western Front, Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery, Living, Top Gun Maverick, and Women Talking. If it doesn't go to Sarah Pauly for Women Talking, what are we doing? What are we doing? Wh I love Top Gun Maverick. Y'all know how much I love it. Why is it here? Why is Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery here? Like, it just boggles my mind that it's an adapted. So Women Talking, 150% is going to Sarah Pauly. Should win, will win, done. Like, that's how we're doing it. It's women talking. I will go off if any other film wins for adapted screenplay. It has to go to my Canadian babe, Sarah Pauly, because what she did with the script was absolutely phenomenal, and she deserves it. So next we have best original screenplay. This one's harder. This one's way harder. You have the Banshees of Inishir and Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablements, Tar, and Triangle of Sadness. Holy bejesus, okay? Literally unreal, this category. So for me, between Triangle of Sadness, Tar, and The Fablemans, it ran a bit long. Those three scripts, even though they were interesting to watch, could have been cut down a bit more. It did drag on. It was a bit all over the place. And some instances, they didn't really highlight what they were supposed to be highlighting and some characters overpowered other characters some storylines ran a bit long so i do think that those three do not have qualities of a screenplay that should be winning best picture no offense to all of them it's just it needed some tightening up 100 percent um and there were some choices made in the scripts that i would have kind of elaborated on 
as I've mentioned in my reviews, which you can find them all below. Um, so it is between the Banshees of Inishir and Everything Everywhere All at Once. Unfortunately, Everything Everywhere All at Once also needed some tightening up. And I think for 2022, the Banshees of Inishir has a perfect script. I would give original screenplay to the Banshees of Inishir and it didn't feel like it was dragging. I think the Banshees have a slight edge here over Everything Everywhere All at Once. It's... I should win Banshees and it will win everything everywhere all at once. I'm not being like mean about it. I do think that the script in the third act completely lost me. That's where it started losing a bit of steam for me, whereas Banshees was just like steady across the board. So that's, uh, that's where I'm currently at with this. Next, we have Best Supporting Actor. We have Brendan Gleeson for The Banshees of Inishirin, Brian Tyree Henry for Causeway, Judd Hirsch for The Fablemans, Barry Keegan for The Banshees of Inishirin, and Ki Hui Kwan for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Locked, loaded, ready to go, bring your tissues. Ki Hui Kwan is winning this Oscar. He was my favorite part of this movie. So I'm really excited for him. And that speech is going to be incredibly emotional. Um, I'm already tearing up now, but I just think it's been such a beautiful award season for him. And I'm just thrilled, absolutely thrilled for him. So it's a lock. It really is. Next, we have Best Supporting Actress. I have some stuff and things to say about this one. So Angela Bassett for Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Hong Chao for The Whale, Carrie Condon for The Banshees of Inishirin, Jamie Lee Curtis for Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Stephanie Hsu for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Listen, the chatter on Twitter has been really hard to stomach because in all honesty, no offense to Jamie Lee Curtis, she should not have been nominated, number one. Number two, she should not have won that many awards prior to the Oscars whatsoever because I've personally felt like her character did nothing in this movie. And it literally is for a five-minute glorified, here's Jamie Lee Curtis. No offense to her. I love her so much. But Angela Bassett's right there. They did her dirty before. This woman has had such a long career, and she still hasn't been recognized for her work on this level. Sure, she won a Golden Globe. I'm not knocking that. But this, this is her moment. It's Angela Bassett's moment. Okay, and I really don't want it to be like, but everything everywhere all at once has to sweep. It isn't good for how we're supposed to approach predicting these award winners at all. And I don't like that because if anyone from everything everywhere all at once should be nominated for supporting and win, it's Stephanie Hsu. It's not Jamie Lee Curtis. So don't try to fit Jamie Lee Curtis into this narrative because the movie that you're picking to sweep needs to sweep because that's not right. And it shouldn't be Jamie Lee Curtis. Everyone knows it shouldn't be Jamie Lee Curtis. And it's going to be a very big upset if Jamie Lee Curtis wins because we know it's not for that role. And then the Oscar politics come in. So I will be rooting for Angela Bassett and Angela Bassett should be winning this Academy Award. That's all I got to say. It was just a bit irritating seeing that people were okay with Jamie Lee Curtis winning all of a sudden over Angela Bassett. That just did not sit right with me whatsoever, and I had to address it. Next, we have Best Actor. <sighs> stressed. Stressed. Bloody stressed. Austin Butler for Elvis, Colin Farrell for The Banshees of Inishirin, Brendan Fraser for The Whale, Paul Mescal for After Sun, and Bill Nye for Living. It is no longer a three-way tie. Colin Farrell has exited the chat. He's just having a good time right now. Austin Butler has faded. I don't know why the chatter for Austin Butler has faded. I don't know what's happening with that. Brendan Fraser is now like the front runner with the slight edge. I really do think he's going to win it. I really do. As much as I love Austin Butler, he has the curse of the newcomer. And like that's what's going to set him apart from Brendan Fraser, who's been in the industry. It's a comeback story, and it is a freaking emotional performance for him. So I do think that Brendan Fraser is a should win, will win for me, and that is going to be my final prediction. If Austin Butler wins, I will be more than ecstatic. He can break the curse of like the newcomer, but again, we have to look at the fact that the Academy 
loves their biopics, as we saw last year. So it's how they're feeling. The track record for biopics has been spot on every single time. That's why I don't count Austin Butler out, but I do count Colin Farrell out, unfortunately, even though it's one of my favorite performances of his. Brendan Fraser should be taking it. It was a slow race between the two of them, but I do think that Frazier's taking it. Next, we have Best Actress. <sighs> Listen, this is hard. And I don't want you guys to be like, well, why is it tough, Amanda? It's like, it's tough. And I'm going to tell you why it's tough. Michelle Yeoh was very, very good in everything, everywhere, all at once. Kate Blanchett was also very, very good in Tar. But leading up to... The Oscars, I remember one year when they split Matthew McConaughey and DiCaprio and McConaughey was like pulling ahead because he was nominated in the dramatic category, the drama category. And then Leo for Wolf of Wall Street was nominated in the comedic category. So when they put them together at the Oscars, they almost always go for the dramatic performance. So Michelle Yeoh here was nominated for comedy and Kate Blanchett was nominated for drama. Let's not forget what they've done in the past. They did it with Michael Keaton, and they did it with Eddie Redmayne. Eddie Redmayne was going on a tear for drama. Michael Keaton was in the comedy category with Birdman. Same situation happened. Do not be surprised if Kate Blanchett wins for Tar. I'm telling you right now. Do not be surprised. Would I love if Michelle Yeoh wins? 150%. I would love if Michelle Yeoh wins. Love that. But you have to remember the divide. You have to remember the track record of the Academy because they've done this before. So the way that it was categorized from the beginning is the one thing that's holding back Michelle Yeoh from winning that Oscar. And that's the only reason why I'm apprehensive. Next, we have Best Director. <laughs> uh, we have Martin McDonough for The Banshees of Inishir and Daniel Kwan and Daniel Sharnart for Everything Everywhere All at Once, Todd Field for Tar, Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans, and Ruben Ostland for Triangle of Sadness. Do you think that there could be an upset in director? And that depends who's winning Best Picture. It could be another pairing, thank God, if it's like Best Director, Best uh, best Picture, if they do that again, that would be really awesome. I don't know. I have just a weird feeling for Best Director that something's going to come out of left field, but I am locking in the Daniels for should win, will win, because their work with the film is ambitious and really strong. So out of the five directors nominated, I would definitely give it to the Daniels. Next, obviously we have Best Picture. We have All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, The Banshees of Inishirin, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. This is definitely going to be Everything Everywhere All at Once. There is no way that this film, after all the love that it has gotten this award season, is not winning Best Picture. There's no other front runner. I mean, the Banshees of Inishir and gave it a run for its money for a bit, but nothing else is rising above everything, everywhere, all at once as a whole. Would I love to see Top Gun Maverick winning just to piss people off? 100%. That's just the way I am. I would love for that to happen. I don't see Elvis winning. I don't see Avatar The Way of Water winning. It's gotten zero traction. I don't see All Quiet winning. Hopefully it does win international features so it doesn't like pull an upset here. But yeah, I'm going to lock in everything, everywhere, all at once. At one time, I was saying The Fablemans, but that has drastically changed over it not winning anything and not getting any love whatsoever but now everything everywhere all at once is definitely my predicted winner for best picture that will be a phenomenal moment for everyone who worked on that film and i think it's going to be something special for the 95th academy awards 100 percent so those are my predictions. There's just so much that I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Of course, I'm looking forward to that red carpet. I'm looking forward to the presenters and the speeches. I think there's going to be a really special telecast. Unfortunately, Jimmy Kimmel is hosting and uh, I don't find him funny, but we'll see how well this goes for them. <laughs> so please let me know in the comments below who you're rooting for. How many awards will Everything Everywhere All at Once take home? Kind of get like a betting system going on in the, uh, in the comments. Let me know. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can always follow me over at AMX ND Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. I'll catch you guys next time. Keep watching movies.